You probably already know that women hate needy guys. So today we'll talk about how women can tell if you're being needy and four ways to completely crush your neediness. So Lynn, how as a woman tell if a guy is being needy? There are tons of signs, but I think what's gonna help is if I share a little story. I have a friend, let's call him Bob, and Bob has a major crush on a girl, let's call it that. It's a girl that he wants to impress. It's a girl that he basically bends over backwards for. So when Bob's at work, he constantly has his phone out. When his crush texts him, he gets so excited. He reaches for his phone every time he texts her back within a matter of nanoseconds. He will basically stop the universe just to entertain her or to respond to her or to make sure that she knows that he's there and he's really quick to respond. Putting her at the center of his universe, basically. Absolutely. And with this situation, that's just the start of it. The other thing he does is he's very quick to uh, make her feel good and fulfill every request, fulfill every favor that she has. He literally took time off work to help her move. There was another time that she was going out with, with friends and she wanted someone to watch her dogs. He took her dogs in, in his small apartment, watched her dogs. Another time she went out with him, but she said that she needed to cut the date short because she had another date lined up afterwards. <laughs> Brutal. He told her he wasn't happy about it, but he went on with the date anyway. He basically did whatever she wanted. He wanted to please her every single time, putting everything else he had completely aside to make sure that she knew he was going to do everything to move mountains for her. So basically, he was putting his needs above her needs. Every time. Also, at the risk of his own livelihood, right? Like, he took off work or wasn't as pregnant as he could be at work because he was so determined to make sure that he was impressing her. Basically, a guy that put her on a pedestal. So that situation, that was just pertinent to Bob's case where he had this crush on the girl for a couple of years and she just refuses to be his girlfriend. She tells him all the time that she doesn't want anything serious with him. Keeps it on because he's so infatuated almost with liking her and wanting her one day to be his girlfriend. But neediness also comes out in approaches in situations where guys only have a date. This happened actually recently with someone I know. He met a girl he approached her. He liked her a lot. She was beautiful. He was doing the whole, like, I'm putting you on a pedestal and I'll I'll move mountains for you. And it turned out that she was in, in a, a weird situation where she didn't have a place to stay. Instead of inviting her over to his hotel, he was a little bit embarrassed. I guess the hotel wasn't that nice. So he bought her an entire room at like a four or five star hotel just to make sure that she was pampered and spoiled. And this is after knowing her for less than an hour. She needed a hotel room and he offered to get her a hotel room? Yeah. So that's a situation where a woman will definitely pick up on a guy being needy from just first meeting him too. The women can really pick up neediness in every sense of a situation or, or an interaction, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's a crush, a first time meeting someone, but also through texting. There's an element this pushy, reactive, hypersensitive, white knuckling the conversation or the situation and needing it to go just right, being overly concerned with how she responds and how the interaction is going. Yeah, and I would say the same is true for when a guy first meets or approaches a woman. If he's being needy, it's gonna come off as very apologetic, like, hey, I'm so sorry to bother you. He's gonna be speaking in a higher pitched tone kind of like a waiter like yep. hey is there anything i can do for you and it's just his energy is just very very overly pleasing and she can feel that overly soft overly safe really wanting to make sure that she knows he's a good guy he's not creepy he's a guy that she can trust and depend on thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to help okay so let's get into the four ways a guy can stop being needy so that he can finally start attracting the women that he really wants essentially what it boils down to is when a guy's in a headspace of scarcity and is lacking some self-respect is lacking some boundaries those two elements combined that is that's a, not a good combination that is when you're going to come off needy Lynn can you repeat that? That was gold. Yes. So if you look at all these elements that are coming off needy, whether it be people pleasing, whether it be this 
pushy kind of feeling, whether it be being overly nice and putting her on a pedestal, whether it be trying too hard, whether it be playing it safe, all these tiny nuanced ways that someone is being that will definitely come across as needy. And there, there are probably more. But if you look at the root of what's underneath all of them, it's always a combination of scarcity, meaning that the person feels like, oh man, I, I got to get it right with this person because there aren't many others out there like her or there aren't many others out there that are going to like me or give me as much attention as this person is right now combined with a lack of self-respect and a lack of self-respect basically means boundaries is not being firm to a code of how you want to be treated and letting someone disrespect you or letting someone walk all over you. What's interesting, Lynn, is that in pickup advice, to overcome that scarcity, go out and just meet lots and lots of women and you know approach every woman you see and go on lots of dates and just you know create abundance. The problem with that is that then guys get needy about needing lots of women in their life. And so it doesn't really solve the root problem. So let's dive into the four ways to over overcome and completely crush that neediness. The first way to overcome neediness is to let her go. Let me explain. <laughs> when I first started dating women, I would do everything I can to keep them. I felt like I had to text them back right away. I felt like I had to shower them with gifts and just do all these things to keep her. In mm -hmm. fact, this one girl that I dated, Nikki, and when she started pulling away from me, instead of just giving her some space, I sent her roses, I sent her poetry that I found on the internet, it wasn't even mine, but I thought it was pretty good. I started going to where her friends would work and started asking about her. I kind of became a stalker yeah. and she ended up completely blocking me from Facebook. What I should have done is I should have just given her some space, right? I should have been just okay letting her go. Like, okay, she's pulling away for a while or she's p pulling away a little bit let me just give her some space let me just be okay without her so one thing that guys can do if they feel that they're starting to become needy especially with one particular woman in their life or somebody they have a crush on is to just ask themselves can you be okay with not having women in your life in general i see this the most with guys who start talking to really attractive women so if he there's like a really hot girl he's all about that's when he becomes even more needy and that's when he become he starts acting in ways that he's just kind of like falling all over himself in order to just appease her so i always ask my clients like how would you act if you weren't that into her what would you tolerate if you weren't that into her and worse comes to worse could you be okay saying no and letting her go? You you have to be okay with that in order to have a healthy relationship and in order to come across as yep. confident too. And the funny thing is too, when you're willing to let her go and she feels that energy too, it doesn't mean you completely like block her or stop texting her or stop showing any interest or affection. It's just now you're not overdoing it anymore. You're not so sold on her right away just because she's so beautiful. You take her off that pedestal and you're like, yeah, she's a human being. She's no and different than me. She's no different than anybody else and you start treating her that way and that attracts her towards you. Now she's interested even more because she knows that you have self-respect, because she knows that you have an, a life outside of her, because she knows that you're willing to not tolerate behaviors that are unacceptable. The second way to overcome neediness is to do it for you, not for women. We have a client, Dylan, who was approaching hundreds of women a week. He was doing an amazing and job going on tons and tons of dates, I... but he actually started getting needy because of all the approaches he was doing. It was like he needed to do all those approaches and go on tons and tons of dates to validate himself, to validate his self-worth. So there's nothing wrong with approaching a lot of women or going on lots of dates, but you gotta do it for you because you wanna do it, not because you're seeking validation. A lot of guys will post all these pictures on Instagram to feel good about themselves, to get attention from women, and there's nothing wrong with the act of posting certain pictures of your life, but you need to be doing it for yourself. And yeah, some girls see it and they like it, great. That should not be the sole purpose. You should be living your life, living your best life, and women are just along for the ride. It's funny, I just wrapped up teaching a boot camp yesterday, and one of the students I had in there, his name is Gary, he said, my mind is completely just blown away because I came in here thinking that I needed to learn all these things about how to be smooth and, and all these traits that women are gonna find attractive and how to become basically like a woman's dream guy. 
And what I realized is it's not about learning the traits and it's not about becoming certain things that you think will attract women. What it is about is becoming an unbelievable version of yourself. And Mm -hmm. the aftermath, a consequence of that is attracting the type of woman that you want. Because a lot of guys have that reversed. It's just a different energy and, and they can feel that. They can feel when you're doing all these things to impress them versus just doing it for yourself. One thing, for example, that we always tell clients is don't take a woman, generally speaking, don't take a woman to a really fancy restaurant on your first date because it can set the wrong frame that you're trying to do this to impress her. However, if you can afford it, that's like no big deal. It's a drop in the bucket for you and you love going to these kind of places, she's going to be able to tell that you took her there because you love it versus you trying to impress her. The third way to overcome neediness is to fulfill your own needs. Needy guys are looking for women to get their needs met. They're looking for that validation that we talked about. So one thing that's very important to do is to take mental inventory or write down a list of the things you're trying or hoping to get out of her, out of their relationship. Is it companionship? Is it status? Is it something romantic or sensual, really look deeply as what it is she will make you feel if you do conquer her attention or or get into a relationship. Of those needs, some of them will be able to be fulfilled on your own. There are a couple that, sure, you need someone else for companionship, but even with that one, can you start enjoying your own company? Can you start doing things, going to restaurants, uh, going to bars, going to the movies on your own? And the more you're able to fulfill those needs, the less needy and reactive you're going to be to her. You could even ask yourself, why don't you feel comfortable doing things by yourself, like going to a nice restaurant or going to the movies by yourself? Why don't you like hanging out with just you? Because you should be your favorite person to hang out with. Because here's the thing, if you don't love doing things on your own, like for example, going on a a trip by yourself, which is also a great way to get out of your comfort zone and just like build some character and have some experiences. If you don't like doing those things, there's a good chance you have some past stories, traumas, limiting beliefs, shames, things that are really holding you back and that are creating the neediness and likely are also holding you back in other parts of your life, which of course is why you need to get those things handled. We need to get to the root cause of it, which is one of the things that we help guys with through our mentorship program but we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. And finally, the fourth way to overcome neediness is to eliminate pedestal syndrome, which is when you see a woman's worth or value higher than yourself. Love me, love me. Lynn, I think you have a good story, something that happened at a recent boot camp to illustrate this. I do. I was teaching a boot camp and one of our students, George, he was doing a connecting exercise with one of our models and she's an amazingly gorgeous girl. And I can tell that there was there was a fog, there was a filter. He wasn't able to connect. And I was asking him a line of questions as they were doing that exercise. Can you get truly curious about her? Do you know what, what kind of hesitations, what kind of heartbreaks, what her, her fears are? Do you know what she wants in her life? Do you know what she wants in her future? Do you know if she wants to be a mom? And for some reason, that last question really clicked for her. And then it was, it was almost like the, the fog and the filter disappeared for him. And he was got completely grounded. He got present with her. He humanized her. He wasn't trying to overly impress. He was just being with her. And mm. he very much connected with him that instant. Yeah, and another thing you can do is stop doing things that objectify women. Things like looking at porn. In your mind, they, they, they become these sex objects. Also following really attractive Instagram models. You see these women and you go, wow, they're so gorgeous, right? And you're lusting after them. Unfollow all of them. Even when you see women in real life, your buddies will like nudge you and be like, look at her. Wow, she's so gorgeous. Stop doing that. Instead go, yeah, she's pretty, but let's go see if she's cool. Maybe she's awesome. Maybe she's not so cool. Maybe she's a horrible person. I don't know. Let's go see. That's a much better mindset. And plus, it's much easier to actually go over and talk to her with that type of mindset versus the, oh my gosh, wow, look at her. That's putting her on a pedestal. And you just got to stop doing that. All these tips are designed to help you to stop being needy. Number one, being okay with letting her go. Number two, building a life for yourself, not for women. Number three, fulfilling your own needs 
means. And of course, number four, eliminating pedestal syndrome. That being said, I would say about 80% of our clients have just really deep rooted nice guy syndrome where they just put women on a pedestal, they act really needy. And a lot of times we got to get to the root issue, which is oftentimes some some deep trauma or, or shame or, or deep rooted limiting beliefs. Yep. Or lack of self-worth. Now, here's the deal. If you want me, Lynn, and our entire team of coaches to help you let go of that neediness and the needy behavior that's pushing women away, then make sure to hop on a dating consultation call with our team to see if you're a good fit for our coaching program. There's a link down below. Click that link and apply for a call.